Okay, today, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, a very interesting subject that a lot of people are interested in is uh, karate going to the Olympics in 2020 and this affects the field of martial arts, especially karate. Everybody who teaches karate starts talking about it and I want to give my own view about it. So to have my paper with me, I just wrote a few notes so I can be um, more uh, clear. Okay, first of all, I did compete. Actually, I did uh, some uh, competitions, very few. I was a member of the national team. I wasn't the best member. I didn't win trophies and I didn't go uh, to compete internationally. Uh, but I went to um, the national team and I trained there. And the training was very good. It was very good for me um, because it was a different type of training. A lot of speed training, um, a lot of points training, and, and points you can actually uh, take it to another place and um, make it self-defense. Because if you know how to move fast and to attack fast, very point and accurate, uh, you can learn how to make it self-defense. So different training was good for me. Uh, there were are also some bad things like I, the attitude. I didn't like the attitude. The attitude was like winning, losing. If you hit someone, you said, "Oh, my, what did you do to me?" And, and in the dojo, somebody gets hit. Thank you. Let's continue. Or get the punch. Take your hands back up and fight again. Uh, fighting was totally different. Like um, when it, I was at my dojo, everything was short, kicking, punching, and in competition, you have to make ah, long movements and shout. And totally different, different things. I would say good or bad. Uh, to be honest, I do traditional karate. Uh, we do s little competitions, sometimes we do sumo competitions, sometimes we do kata competitions, sometimes we do rendori competitions. We do some competitions, especially for the kids because it's easier. But I do traditional karate, which means I train the self-defense part, um, the research part, the kata. The kata, we do a lot of kata and we try to research the kata, find applications for self-defense and try to understand what's the best way to um, Training. So let's go back to uh, karate in the Olympics. What are people scared of? If you go to judo or taekwondo and you see that most of the dojos, the main issue is um, competition. You don't find a lot of traditional dojos. I don't know if there is something like judo traditional dojo or is in Israel. I'm not sure you can find a traditional do dojo of taekwondo. That's, that's very difficult to find. Everything is concentrated to the Olympic Games, winning the Olympic Games. Maybe there is, I think there is one or two, but a lot of uh, teachers started doing it for the Olympic Games and governments put money into your dojo if you produce champions, uh, national champions, uh, world champions, and sometimes Olympic champions. So that's why people are scared that their, their dojos are going to change, the, the format of uh, the traditional karate, traditional martial arts is going to change. That's what people don't want, they're scared. What do we want? Actually, everybody who teaches wants more students, more wants more influence, I think. That's my view of it. We want more influence, we want to influence more people uh, to make the world a better place. And I'm not joking, I'm, I'm serious about it. Um, and, and if you want to change the world, you need more students and you need more influence. And if you change it to a sport event, then a lot of people are gonna stay out of it because it's sport, but when it's traditional, Everybody has its place in the dojo. Okay, what can we gain of it? What can we gain of uh, um, karate getting into the Olympic Games? I think if karate is going to get into the Olympic Games, a lot of people are going to notice karate. They're going to learn about it. They're going to maybe not the things we actually wanted as traditional teachers, but the name karate is going to pop. Ah, karate. Ah, you do karate. Oh, I know what I did. I saw it in the Olympic Games. And you might have more students, more opportunities. Maybe some dojos will um, teach part time for uh, com competitors and it might grow. I think if you're serious about it, you can keep your tradition and even have another teacher inside your dojo teach other people uh, for competitions. So, before I go to my conclusion, just want to show you a few things on the computer and I'll give you a few tips and. Um, I'll, I'll go to my conclusion. Okay, about martial arts, and it's, let's zoom in. Okay, let's zoom in. Okay, now you see my computer, and you hear me talking. So, there's a lot of people in the, um, in this world. Lyoto Mashida, if you know Lyoto Mashida. Lyoto Mashida, if you see this guy, he did, what, did incredible things. I don't know if you like it or not, he did incredible things in the field of MMA he came from. Uh, 
Competitive karate, can he defend himself? Yes, he can. Can he did the karate crane kick? This is Lyoto Mashida. He came from competitions like might being in the Olympics. Rafael Agaev was also an uh, incredible uh, competitor. He's an inspiration. I think a lot of people who see him can see him as an inspiration. Rafael Agaev. Okay, let's go on. Um, and there's also the, the, the um, traditional teachers like Sensei Tara Masaji, who, who does a wonderful uh, kata application. And this tradition, I think, is going to stay because it's so good and so strong that this is going to stay. Okay, let's go on. Morio Higuana. I, I, I'm sure everybody who does Goju Ryu have heard about Morio Higuana. He's one of the most famous Goju Ryu masters. He's a great master. And I think when he was young, he competed as well. His son is competing, I know, in the martial arts sport. Let's go on. I want to show you Miki Oyahara. Miki Oyahara is an incredible Shotokan master. He's incredible. I saw his videos. He's great. This guy is fantastic. If you haven't seen a video of his, you have to see it. This is a true master of martial arts. Wonderful videos. And I think also when he was young, he used to compete. He used to compete. Okay, let's go on. Stefan Wonderboy Thompson is also a karate practitioner in the MMA. Uh, he does their shows you how MMA techniques can work, how uh, karate techniques can work in MMA. Also, he came from competitions and took it to other competition and it works. And um, last thing I want to show you is the Japanese national women team did a, an incredible demonstration. I'll, I'll put the link here. This demonstration is incredible, just incredible. I've never seen something like it. It's 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 something phenomenal. Yes. It comes from competition. This is not traditional. This is not traditional application. This is competition application. But this, if this continues, we can also benefit from it. The people who teach traditional martial arts, you can benefit from it. Look at the level. Look at the performance. Look at what they do. They do a lot of great stuff. So what is my conclusion? My conclusion is very, 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 very simple. Okay, it's very simple, very simple, very easy. I think uh, if karate is anywhere is going to be in the Olympic Games in two, uh, in 2020, okay, in 2020, there's a, there's a lot of things we can gain from it. If we can understand what it can bring uh, to our dojo, a lot of interest. Maybe I'm not going to teach Olympic karate, I'm going to teach my traditional karate because well, after 20 something years, I might, might like the way I teach, I might like to go the way I'm, to go the steps I'm going and not change. Maybe I want to change. Because you have to be, you know, uh, what's his name? He said, um, Bruce Lee said, be like water, my friend. Things are changing. The world is changing all the time. I think we should be like water when it's needed. Understand the things that can get into our life. Enjoy it. Weird. I think we can make the best from karate getting into the Olympic Games. We keep with doing our karate and we can give inspiration to our students from people who made it in the Olympic Games. And we can keep on teaching kids with autism, kids with um, um, disabilities, adults with disabilities and keep on making the world a better place and understanding there's a big spectrum. The spectrum comes from Olympic champions, athletes, uh, to people that have this disabilities and we can help them all achieve uh, better uh, situations in your life. Thank you very much for listening to me. I know it was long, but I think it can benefit you. Thank you very much.